Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. After the individual castings are made, they are cleaned, scrubbed, and pickled and then examine to make sure there are no inclusions of investment or small bubbles left on the internal surface. A small bubble or investment would keep the casting from seating all the way. Little bubbles will form at the base of the pins and this should be carefully examined. Should there be a bubble in this spot, a chisel or a small round burr can be used to remove the bubble, but care must be taken not to thin or weaken the pin. The castings then are tried on the individual silver dies. They are carefully seated without a whole lot of pressure. When they are seated, the margins are examined. The cuspid casting is also tried on and the margins are checked. A 5S burnisher is used to burnish the margins. You'll notice that we are burnishing parallel to the margins and with a slight amount of pressure. This is only possible on a metal die, for if we would use a stone die, this would destroy the die. A number 11 greenstone is used to thin the margins. The margins have been purposely bulked in the wax pattern stage and now the margins will be thinned. We will run this green stone parallel to the margin, trying not to cut the die. The purpose of this is to give the casting the same contour of the original tooth. The same is done with the other casting. Thinning the bulky margins and restoring the contour back to the gold casting. A series of sand disks are used then to further polish and thin the margins, starting with a medium sand going down to a fine cuddle. The medium sand disk is used to very carefully go up to the margin but not on the silver die. The only disc that we use to touch the silver die is the fine cuddle. The discs are also used to thin the incised ledge. When the rough finish has been completed, we should have very smooth margins and the only differentiation that we should see is the differentiation in color and no catches. The castings then are tried on the articulator the cuspid die is seated and the distal contact is checked. This may keep the die from seating all the way. If it does not seat, this should be adjusted at this particular time. The central incisor also is inserted and then the occlusion is checked. There should be a centric relation and a centric occlusion stop. And if this is correct, then we will check the protrusive excursion. When we move the articulator into the protrusive excursion, the individual castings should not be high. If they are, they should be adjusted. Working is also checked. There should be no working interference and there should be a cuspid guidance. If this is not correct, it should be changed at this particular time. The individual soldering lugs are refined and now we are ready to wax the potic for the fabrication of this anterior bridge. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. 
Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.